Hi, everyone. I'm Casey Ullenhut. I'm a product manager uh, at Databricks. And my name is Vijay Sankaran. I'm uh, from State Street. It's one of the world's largest uh, uh, financial services firm with uh, uh, interests in uh, custody banking or uh, and asset ownership and management. We also have uh, interests in um, the area of uh, investment management with uh, one of the largest operations uh, dealing with, and it's one of the earliest uh, providers of ETFs, as you might have uh, heard of them. Uh, and in our space, uh, we have a bunch of um, you know, interaction with uh, generative AI solutions, uh, specifically uh, because uh, we end up with dealing with a lot of documents um, in our world, um, and uh, these are financial statements and uh, tra transaction documents, and we also have a lot of need for uh, a number of different um, research, uh, data-based research uh, needs uh, across the company. So a lot of our customers at Databricks are trying to figure out, hey, what should they build with generative AI, and then how do they get ROI? out of these use cases. And so VJ, when we spoke earlier, you had mentioned, hey, there's sort of like three ways to get value from generative AI. I said like, hey, you can either get productivity gains, you can build a net new product, uh, or you can have customer improvements that you're launching. So kind of like loved that framing. So maybe given that, can you like walk us through one of the use cases that you have at State Street? That's one of your most like strategic generative AI use cases that you all are building there. Definitely, thank you. Uh, so the uh, along those three dimensions or uh, axes that we typically measure all our uh, products um, that we uh, try to build out, um, let me start with the customer delight or customer experience improvement kind of things, right? Uh, a lot of these um, millions of uh, trades that uh, flow through our systems over the you know every single day um, tend to have a, a lot of uh, human touch uh, required. Uh, and whenever that happens, um, we end up with, um, you know, having to, it's not just customer support in the traditional sense. In many of these cases, it is uh, simply tracking and actually canceling a trade that was issued by a, an automated system. Uh, so in all those scenarios, uh, we end up having to conduct research on uh, where is it in the overall trade clearance workflow and halt it there. So one of the new things that we are innovating uh, on is um, the uh, instruction comes to us in forms of documents. The data uh, for our transactions is already in um, large uh, systems, including mainframes, uh, which uh, we end up having to uh, have copies of in uh, data lake uh, oriented structures. Right, so we're uh, uh, building out a full-fledged uh, platform that is going to do smart research uh, in terms of locating uh, where in the workflow it is, and then uh, specifying also, okay, what needs to happen next in terms of uh, and the latest um, uh, innovation that came out just about last week from um, OpenAI with their Strawberry uh, model, which allows us to think in several steps. That's essentially what we were uh, building out, but that's, uh, that's definitely upending a little bit of our work or probably accelerating some of our work in that space. Got it. And so what is the business value that you're delivering with this sort of like document-centric automation that you're uh, building out? There are three, again, it, it clicks on all three of our axes. Like first is the customer delight, which is uh, what used to take uh, approximately uh, two to three uh, hours in some cases uh, is now being, uh, the time scale is being compressed. So the customer is able to uh, get what they want uh, much faster, right? Uh, that also translates into productivity gains at our, um, at our end, which is uh, this whole notion of, uh, you know, having lesser touch on our uh, employees, from our employees. And then, uh, of course, the uh, new product uh, introduction, we haven't uh, yet uh, gone in that direction uh, fully, but there's a lot of thinking going on about how to present this as, a offer, as an offering to our customers as well. What we found at Databricks is many of our customers are really struggling to get to quality. Like getting quality Gen AI apps into production is hard. And so many of our customers are finding ways to sort of embrace data intelligence. So by using their enterprise data to improve uh, general intelligence to achieve quality, or they're using compound AI systems. So rather than shipping like one monolithic model with like maybe like a huge prompt on it, you're actually breaking it down into like modularized components where you can like specialize each component. 
In our case, even if we keep the prompts uh, the uh, same, the variety that we face in the documents that are coming towards us from the, in the market, um, actually the data demographic changes. And as a result, the response changes. And so we start looking at a different part of our operation just because in the document uh, structure was different or the words used in the document were different than what the, uh, you know, the whole solution was set up to do. So what we end up doing is uh, a lot of like pre-processing the document, categorizing it, classifying it, uh, using both uh, older machine learning based uh, and machine vision based techniques, as well as, uh, you know, uh, figuring out how to deal with uh, RAG inaccuracies by using knowledge graphs uh, in addition to the uh, original RAG itself. Um, and then maybe Vijay, can you also walk us through what's sort of like the, are you all building a compound AI system or using data intelligence uh, at State Street um, or how are you all architecting your solutions today? Yeah, it's a it's a mostly the data intelligence part um, in the agentic approach uh, where you have um, each of the agents is uh, optimized for uh, you know object certain objective functions that they are uh, looking at uh, right uh, when you have a cluster of those they will sort of like uh, collaborate to come at the arrive at the solution a compound AI system unfortunately tends to be very engineer centric in its thinking. Right, it's a sort of a linear uh, if this then that kind of a, a thing that uh, we are all um, uh, trained on uh, trying to translate into software. So uh, we are sort of like have, uh, coming somewhere in between that in our compound AI solution. Right, we end up with uh, the, uh, the uh, first of all, of course, RAG centric uh, use cases. Then I was referring to the knowledge graph, which also uh, rolls in some of the um, symbolic representation of our. Uh, either it is workflows that uh, have to solve a certain problem or um, have the understanding of the domain understanding of certain um, types of, uh, you know, uh, securities versus, uh, you know, uh, whether it is uh, uh, like a derivative or a foreign exchange trade, there are different nuances in what happens in those areas. So, um, so that, at a high level, uh, that's one thing. But for us, uh, the uh, bigger challenges were as a very highly regulated uh, industry, as a player in the industry, we end up uh, having to demonstrate to our stakeholders, uh, not only internal, but our regulatory stakeholders, that we have a, a responsible AI system, not just, uh, you know, everybody can have a go at it uh, at any LLM that's out there. So we're going about uh, curating those LLMs and we've come up with a, a sort of a, a much more deliberate um, approach to uh, the, uh, you might call it LLM ops, but uh, essentially linking the LLM in the appropriate part of the overall solution. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we make that call, uh, to the LLM before that, or even while we are making the call to the LLM, we are um, not just a single LLM, multiple LLMs are uh, involved. Uh, mm -hmm. So we end up um, uh, stitching these things together into a quilt work of uh, uh, functional calls, right? Uh, function calls. And then that's uh, what uh, essentially uh, is the overall structure of our um, uh, solution. I see. And do you have to track the series of calls for like audit purposes or Correct. what, that, what that's call like is that design basically? Correct. So there is one is the responsible AI and I'll probably just quickly show you uh, one slide that uh, tries to capture what it is that uh, we are doing, which is uh, in this um, in this notation, right? Uh, we have uh, these uh, you know, of course, there are different applications. We got we just um, label them in the very uh, broadest terms, but mm -hmm. uh, we are provisioning this API SDK, uh, which essentially uh, has all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, technical capabilities at the back end: the prompt catalog, RAG pipelines, and then uh, prompt management, prompt security, and filtering. But essentially, what we uh, have to uh, prov provision. Uh, is um, these kinds of things. You got your jailbreaks, input guardrails, output guardrails. All of these things are uh, built in into the uh, into the uh, uh, overall architecture. Um, now we are looking uh, to. A lot of your compound AI system is applying a bunch of guardrails. Um, yeah, there. correct, correct. Yeah. And we also have uh, evaluation uh, pipelines, right? So that uh, we have to keep track of. Uh, 
uh, you know whether the response that the llm generated was satisfactory to the uh, to the overall solutions uh, context mm -hmm. uh, and then um, so then there's the other interesting thing i'd like to point out i think this goes back to the first uh, topic that she brought up we are spending a bunch of time on this area fine tuning because uh, unlike the prompt tuning we are uh, learning that uh, the um, llms have not yet been trained on financial terminology so a leg in uh, in the financial services world, especially when you're doing a derivatives trade, means something else than a body part, right? right. So uh, we end up having to uh, train those kinds of things. So we have, uh, we're focusing on this, and this is where we're getting a lot of uh, leverage out of Databricks is uh, the mosaic um, uh, layer, right? We uh, love that part as well. Awesome. Um, and Vijay, one of the things that you had mentioned before was, uh, as you moved into like generative AI, so a lot like your solution helps sort of like augment a lot of like the manual labor component and sort of like translating documents into like actual trades. Um, but you said like, hey, back in the day, even though it was only maybe like 70% accurate, the 30% time it was inaccurate, you're able to like very easily figure out what went wrong. Whereas yeah. now it's like 95% accurate, but in that 5% of the time it goes wrong, you can't really debug. So can you kind of like walk through like, what does it mean now that your problem space has shifted like yeah, that? Yeah, thank you for thank you for that prompt. <laughs> so the uh, no pun intended, but uh, the idea here is uh, prior the pre LLM world, right? We we always had these uh, deep uh, CNN uh, based uh, neural network based uh, techniques that uh, with machine vision, where we could uh, locate the coordinates on the page where you're extracting data from, and Tie, tie back the information that you extracted back to that uh, thing so that if there is something that goes wrong, you can, at least the humans in the loop uh, can uh, quickly triangulate to what could, no, I don't want it from this part of the page or this part of the document, I want it from this other place, right? And then there was also the feedback that they could provide to improve our models. Now, what has happened with uh, traditional LLMs? They're only linguistic. That is, they can take in text strings. They're not visual yet, and uh, again, that in, that whole space is being appended by like the Pixtrals and the others that are that have uh, multimodal LLMs, right? Um, yeah. So uh, the text-based LLMs uh, lack that um, uh, that fidelity to tell us what where you picked up this data from in the document, right? So uh, so that gives a little a, a lot of trouble to our humans in the loop to repair the findings or the uh, the results of the solution. And uh, that's exactly like you, you you said it right. We were we were able to increase the uh, accuracy of the uh, information extracted, but we are not able to reduce the effect uh, the time to solve in its entirety. Yep, makes sense. If I if I may put it that yeah. way. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here, and we're excited for what you build next uh, on Databricks.